In today's video, we're gonna be jumping into my computer, editing a real engagement shoot that I need to deliver to my clients. We're gonna go through the image selection process, choosing a preset that I wanna use, editing the images, and then finally exporting them and uploading them to the online gallery for my clients to see. Just for your reference, all of the images were taken with the Sony A7 Mark IV and the 35mm G-Master 1.4. I didn't use any filters or anything with this shoot, no ProMIS filters, so if you have an A7 IV and a 35mm G-Master, this is what the photos are gonna look like. With that being said, let's jump into Lightroom and get going. Now, generally, I am I already know the preset I'm using. I use the CTM V3 main source preset. Uh, that's what the original one was based off, and this is a new iteration that works really well. So I'm just gonna do that, but we will play around with some of the other presets so you can see them for yourself in action. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and just go straight for the main source, and then we're gonna fix that white balance up because it's way too pink and way too cool um, this was like evening and like dense shade so yeah the white balance is really really warm um, that's probably not super accurate it was probably more like about that uh, but you know there's personal taste in there as well i think i'll go for something about that usually what i'll do is kind of zoom in and um, just check skin tone from there uh, make sure it's not too orange or anything like that as well and that looks pretty good so from now i'm really just going to go through and choose the images from this set um, that you can see down the bottom here uh, where they don't have like funny blinks or funny faces or anything like that if you've seen my videos in the past i've talked about you know i need time to kind of warm up and the couples need time to warm up these are those first photos so now what i'm going to do is uh, command c and i'm going to choose all of this stuff if you need to stop and have a look that's everything i'm copying when i've had to make drastic white balance changes like this quite often what i'll do is come back to it after i've edited all the images and just check them again to make sure my eyes still accurate because once you've been staring at a screen for a while it does take toll and uh, sometimes you need to just step away and check back in later so i'm going to flag that one those two actually that one's better his eyes are a little bit more open and natural so we'll get rid of that one, and that's the keeper. Nice. Um, I'll change the settings up here so you can see the settings I was using as well. Um, I am, for this entire shoot, as far as I can remember, I was in aperture priority with auto ISO, and I'm pretty much at 1.4 all the time. And the important thing with using aperture priority and auto ISO is to set your minimum shutter speed. So in this case, I have it set to 2 50th of a second, so my shutter's not gonna drop below that. Um, just so you guys can see, uh, if this is the white balance adjusted photo and it's all edited, I'll go back and change it to the universal. That's the universal one. It is quite different. I still really like it actually, but it is quite different to uh, the main source, which is the new version of Universal. Um, but it's gonna be personal preference. This one is a bit more contrasty and a bit more colorful. If we go back to the main source, the old presets are still gonna work for a lot of people. It really just depends on the scene and everything like that and the style they're going for. If you go all the way back to the OG one, that's it there, man. I remember editing my images like that. I still kind of like it actually, it's quite nice. Nice and soft. So if you've been looking at my Instagram in the past kind of six months, this is the editing you're gonna see. Let's carry on and we'll talk about some of the other presets later on. So carrying on, I got them just to walk towards me, still kind of chatting to each other. As always, there's timestamps in the description if you need to chop back and forth between sections. But for now, let's carry on. And then we got to the top of the dam, it was a bit of a walk actually, um, and I got a couple of shots with the background and focus, uh, but with them still in the shot, just to kind of, you know, reference where we are and show the scene entirely. So I'm gonna go and paste those settings, and I can see it's a little bit warm, but it does actually look quite nice. Um, and we are still in the shade, so, like I said, that's probably more accurate to what it looked like, and it's a bit too pink say about there but I'm gonna warm it up anyway because I kind of like that look for this shoot so we'll copy that because the next scene is all the same like I said unless the light changes or the scene changes it's very it's pretty rare that I'm gonna have to change the preset in these shots I just got Haley to grab Wade's arm and look back at me it's just a nice little moment yeah I can see now that one's a little bit green 
might be going too far the other way yeah that's about right say about 22 see now I, my eyes changed a little bit I've seen what it looked like before and after so I'm going to go back and paste those ones and fix them as well yeah it's looking better it's pretty much as simple as just choosing the images I want a lot of it is done in camera and that just comes with experience but this is how I actually edit an engagement shoot and a wedding is the same. So we'll try one of the other presets just for a laugh. That's the universal, a lot of you guys have that preset and you're using it and it still looks great. And then the proper OG one, that was the first preset I ever released. Nice, but not really what I'm after. Carrying on. Why not? Nice smiles. I swear I do have some kind of uh, method for choosing these and I can tell that's going to be a nice black and white. So that's the new black and white. This shoot was out at Huya Dam. There's kind of a cool spillway that leads into this hole here which you're going to see in a minute. Um, and you can see that first photo I took and then I noticed the security sign. So I just moved my camera over a little bit and I don't have to crop it later. When I'm shooting a lot of what I'm doing is scanning my eye around the viewfinder before I snap the photo. It just saves a lot of time after. So I'll paste that on there, I quite like that. And then I got a photo looking down into the spillway there, it's pretty epic. And then I got a nice photo of Wade looking at me, focused nicely. Let's go back a little bit because I can tell I'm rushing. Um, first what I'm doing is pasting that preset on because I know it's going to be a pretty good base and I can go from there. Then I'm hitting the R key and straightening the image out. And then I'll use the plus and minus key to change the exposure. Um, the highlights are already down from that previous shot but if we see before and after that's what we've got. And then a couple of nice shots of Haley looking up at Wade. These guys are really easy to photograph actually, really nice couple, can't wait for the wedding. Quite like that one as well. Just checking that tint. Quite often I'll go to the extremes and then just slowly get to where I want it. And then I'll look back and see where I was. So I was at about 22, so I know I'm in the right ballpark. So let's go from scratch. R for rotate. Straighten the image out. Let's go with great for mood. So this one is kind of loosely based off muted split, if you guys have the presets from beforehand. Uh, but it's a really good preset, not so much for this situation, although it does have an individual look that can be really nice. Uh, but it's really helpful when you're doing a shoot that's like really cloudy and grey and just like not a nice sunny day. Um, but this is what it looks like on a sunny day in the shade anyway. Usually I'll kind of drop it and then warm it up a fair bit. So that's what that one looks like if we go back and compare it to the main source. It's quite different, uh, but yeah, like I said, it's really intended for really dark, moody um, images. I'm going to go back and copy those settings and paste them onto that photo because it's really important to not use a bunch of different presets on the same shoot. You want to keep with that consistency and, you know, decide the style you're going to edit on before you start getting carried away with all the rest of the images. And again, I'll start from scratch so you guys can see that uh, the presets look like that straight out. So that's the complete raw image, not touched at all. Uh, hit it with the main source, drop those highlights, and then warm it up. Add some of that tint back, there we go. So we'll copy those settings and move to the next one. And then I just moved in close and I uh, got a shot of the ring. Paste those settings on, it's a little bit warm. Tint's about right. Um, and another thing I've been using lately is this texture slider. That works really well with skin. Um, you can overdo it, but if you just want to soften 
like blemishes out and stuff like that. That works really well. And you can brush it on as well. But that looks good. So I'll move on. And I got one in landscape orientation there. With these kind of photos, I just set the scene up so I've got the image looking how I want it, the composition. I put the couple where I want them, and then I just say hold hands and walk towards me and just chat to each other. It's pretty much as simple as that. Let's paste that on and see if it still works. And that looks pretty good actually. I'm just gonna put a little bit more tint in there. Cool. Copy those settings and move on, see if there's any more in that scene. Okay, we can try one of the old ones, so the Universal. So that one looks like it's much more muted, more of a soft kind of pastel tone to it. As I move on, I'm just copying again, like, you know, I'm recopying all the settings as the scene moves on and kind of changes a little bit. I can see that texture is still down, I've just noticed, so I'm gonna get rid of that and go back again and paste that on. And these photos I'm really kind of just paying attention to where they're actually looking and there's no need to give five of the same composition. You know, you want to give two max uh, if they're different enough. Like... We'll give them that one. And that one. The Moody preset would probably work reasonably well down here once you've warmed it up. See, it's a completely different look and you do need to kind of warm it up, but that's what it's made for, really. You know, it's just a different look. You guys are going to decide. I know a lot of people are using this because they get tagged in your Instagram photos all the time and I do see those. So I'm going to go back, copy that one, because like I said, we want to stick with the same theme. So fast forward a little bit and we've found a little beach. Uh, it was a bit of a shame the tide was way out, but we thought we'll make the most of the situation and we got some nice close romantic images down here. So let's go through some of those. Um, again, we'll just start from scratch, straighten the image out, go for that main source because we've been using it the whole time. They look pretty good actually. Auto white balance is kind of doing the trick there. Love the looks on their faces, they're having so much fun. I'll quite often say uh, chuck one arm over and one arm under so they kind of wrap themselves more rather than kind of sometimes it looks like they're like strangling each other. There's a black and white that I delivered earlier just for their sneak peek. So we'll do that one with the main source. The sauce. Little kiss on the cheek there. We'll do a closed mouth one. And she's got the smile going. It's funny how people think they really photograph really badly, but when you just bring out that natural laughter and happiness in them, it usually goes pretty smoothly. This one's gonna really highlight the difference between the two presets, uh, the old one and the new one. So this is the Universal. Very, very different greens. Um, very kind of 2020 look, um, but I still actually do quite like it. Um, but like I said, we are sticking to the original theme, so we go back to the main source. And just for argument's sake, let's go the Moody one. Very, very different. Doesn't really work in that situation, I don't think. But it's personal preference. So go back, paste, flag. And that was the other sneak peek when I sent them. So that's pretty much how I edit a engagement shoot. 
Um, I do have a few other images to go through and edit, but I'll do that off camera because this video is dragging on a bit and you get the idea. I'm gonna skip through some of this so uh, you guys don't get bored in the process. Now I'm just gonna very quickly show you my export settings and show you the service I'm using to upload to my clients. So once I have all the edited images, I'm just gonna go ahead to the filter and select flag and that's all our processed images there. Hit Command A and then Command Shift E for export. And I have these presets here, so main export, and it puts them in my pictures folder and then I already have it there, so I know I need to rename it. So I'm just gonna go Haley and Wade. Copy that. Engagement. Oh. And then we'll head down to the quality. I have set to 80%. I don't find any difference between 80 to 100%. And it just limits the file size enough that you know it uh, makes it easier for my clients. And that's pretty much it. I don't use any of this other stuff. Um, that's my settings if you wanna see them. And then I hit export. And then the service I'm using is called Pixie Set. I think most of you guys are gonna know what that is. Um, but it's just a really nice looking gallery system uh, that works really well for my clients. So if you go into a full wedding gallery, you can see it's all split up into sections. And it just looks really good when you go through and uh, view it online. They can download them in full res from here, uh, make favorite lists, they can buy uh, images straight from the website in print form. And yeah, it's just a really kind of nice service. It does cost money. Um, I don't, can't even remember what it is, but it's not a hell of a lot. If you're a professional, um, you're gonna need something like this. And Pixie Set is just one of the options and it's the one I use. So I hope that video is interesting for you guys. Let me know if you got to the end of it by dropping a comment below. Subscribe to my channel and I really appreciate all the support. I'll see you guys in the next video real soon. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming, so we'll see you soon.